Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. And Diffie-Hellman is something that we use pretty much in any kind of communication we use today on the internet. And it's a way to uh, for two parties to find a secret that they both know without anybody in between having that secret. So it's not something to authorize or authenticate anyone on the internet. So you don't know who you're talking to. You just know that something that you know, something that you know and is secret to you is also secret to them. And a good, uh, ex good um, application for this is cryptology. And um, I, I remember when I was doing the uh, service for uh, the army, we had these sheets of paper with passcodes and both sides of the communication needed to have the same papers with passcodes and enter the same passcodes in order to establish radio links between two places and it would be good if you can actually talk to them and exchange some information in order to get these passcodes so both sides has the same passcode without anybody who listens in being able to figure out what the passcode is. So that's the Diffie-Hellman uh, protocol. And uh, Diffie-Hellman uh, was conceptualized or the public key protocols was conceptualized by Rolf Merkel a little bit before uh, Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman actually implemented their uh, algorithm Diffie-Hellman. And I have an example of it here on the screen. So we have Alice and Bob, that's the usual name that you are using when you are talking about cryptology and two uh, endpoints that need to talk to each other. So if we start by actually selecting a value, an N value uh, that both Bob and Alice know about. And these are open. Everybody listening in knows about these values. And they need to be prime. So six is not a good number. So we take seven, for instance. That's a prime number. So now we have added seven as an N for all the communication. We, all, we use seven everywhere in our communication. And then we need a G that is a primitive root of seven and we're gonna go more into what the primitive root is uh, later on but I know that one of those are five so now we have actually uh, added something that everybody knows on the internet we are using five and seven as n and g or sometimes they are uh, known as p and g uh, but that's not important and uh, if we don't then look at the secret so now we need to come up with a secret that just alice will use so you see now we have f first off we have just blue numbers at the moment so these are open numbers everybody knows about them so alice will now select a secret so let's say that uh, she selects three so three must be lower than seven so it must be a value that is not higher than seven and then Bob will select a value between zero and seven so let's say or one and seven so let's say that he selects six and if we calculate the value here we see that the this operation here when we are doing the five and the power of three and then modulus seven we get the result of six and this six is then sent over to Bob here. So Bob gets that number. And these numbers are going in plain text over the internet. So everybody can see this number. And then we have Bob and the power of uh, five the, uh, and the power of six. And then modulus seven 
at yields a one that uh, Bob sends over to Alice in clear text over to Alex. And then if we do the same operation again with the starting point of one and six and calculate, we end up with a one. And this one is a secret that both Bob and Alice knows. And in this case, Bob sent a one, so that might not be a good visualization of this, but we see that they come up with the same secret. So now we need to actually work with larger numbers. So if we go in here, we have this little function that I put up that can take a prime. So for instance, I can put in uh, 761, which is a prime. It will tell me that this is a prime. It will tell me what primes will divide this value. So if we use 19, 5, 2, 2, 2, that will divide the number below um, 761. So 761 is not divisible because it's prime, but 760 is divisible. And that's uh, an Euler function um, that there is an, a definition that you can use uh, in order to get this and, and the function is pretty much if it's prime then you remove one um, else you keep the value um, so uh, we get the these primarization of uh, 760 and then we find uh, unique primes and then we divide 760 with these unique primes. So we get 380, 152, and 40. And then we find any number that would, uh, with that that number powered to this power to test is not equal to one when it's modulus with the original value up here. And that's the primitive root. So that's a very weird um, thing to look up. And I looked at a lot of documentation and it was really hard to actually figure out what a primitive root was. Um, some places they are talking about congruent uh, classes and that subject is also very, um, abstract and uh, there are people trying to explain it and I I will say that they uh, didn't really explain it so I understood what they actually were talking about but if we're looking at this little function that I wrote here so first off I have my find primary uh, primitive roots I take in this number that we put in so 760 I will check if it's a prime uh, and if it's not a prime then I will pretty much not do the last part of this equation. So I will check that it's a prime, I will say that 761 is a prime, then I will do this Euler uh, totient uh, function and it's pretty much what you see here. Uh, it will get the value of n, if not uh, it a prime if it's a prime then uh, we uh, actually will remove one from that value and then I set num to this value and that's because I want to keep this value but I want to use uh, a number here uh, in order to uh, figure some things out. I would want to use this Euler to later so I will get a new number here I will uh, set i to a starting value here and I will also create an array of found primes. So this is my little find primes <laughs> function here. It's uh, kind of simple. I will do a while loop as long as the number hasn't reached one. Then I will check if this number is divisible by the prime number at position of i or the offset of i 
and then I will uh, if it's zero here so that it actually is divisible by that number I will say that I found a prime and I will divide my number with that number and then I will continue and uh, because then I want to see if the next value can be divisible and if it's not divisible by that number I will increment my index so I will check the next prime in my list and I actually have a file uh, full of primes here so all uh, I think the first 100 prime numbers is in this file. So I have a long list of primes that I can go through and actually divide by. So then I will print out I found these primes. And then I will do this very uh, small little filter function where I send in a value, an index. And uh, then I send in a self. Uh, so this is uh, the value of... Uh, uh, the full array and then I do an index of the value index and if they are equal so the index sent in is the same index as the value and that's all it's just true for the first of the values in the list the second time you find it the value of will find the first index of that value so that will not be true so that will be removed by this filter function so that's a very simple way to get unique primes. And then I uh, print the unique primes. And then I want to find all these uh, divided uh, powers to test. And that's just a mapping of the original uh, Euler uh, Tontient uh, divided by value. So uh, if we look at the page here, it's these values. So we divide two, 200, uh, 760 by two, we get 380 and so on. So that's that mapping. Uh, very simple, so then I print out powers to test and here comes my function to find uh, primitive roots. And if we close the file window here so we get the full screen, uh, I will go and check if it's a prime or a less. Uh, if it's not, I will not do this. Uh, so this is the actual little bit of logic that we do. We set a label of outer loop because I want to exit the inner for loop and start at the next it uh, iteration of the outer for loop if I actually uh, find a case where the value is not uh, correct. And then I will go through all values between 2 and the number n. And n is the first value that we had. So uh, that's 161. Uh, 761. And then I will go uh, and check all the powers to test uh, by, by this little operation here. I take math. Uh, operation and uh, do the power of uh, i up to the powers to test and then I will do a modulus operation and check if the number is equal to 1 and if that's true then I know that this value is not a valid one to be used so it can't be equal to one. Um, so that's the only explanation I found that you should not have the values that are uh, when you are doing the power up uh, actually get to the original number. <laughs> so uh, you want to remove those. And uh, then I will jump out to the op uh, outer loop and don't take that value. Otherwise, I will take this as a primitive roots of the original number. Um, and uh, as we see in our little test here, we get a lot of those. So for 761, we can just pick one here. 
431. It can actually be a number that is not prime, 430 for instance. So if I do take 761 and 430, so those are the numbers that Alice and Bob come to conclusion that they want to use these numbers. And when we are doing Diffie-Hellman in real practice, you are using, using very much larger numbers so you can have large secrets as well. Uh, usually you use uh, 2046 bits or 48 bits uh, keys and, uh, and primes of that magnitude as well. So uh, let's say that Alice selects uh, 53 at, as her secret and Bob is using let's say 86 at, at his secret. And then we see that we get a lot larger numbers here. Uh, so 345 is the number we send over the network as some uh, random number. And Bob takes that value and puts it into his equation. And then we send 566 to Alice and Alice puts that into her equation equation and then we calculate both of these and they come up with a secret of 397. This value has never been set over the network and no one listening in can have this value. If we have a man in the middle we can have somebody actually saying to Alice I'm Bob and saying to Bob I'm Alice. So there could be a man in the middle that resends the messages. So Bob and Alice needs to have some way to authenticate that they are talking to each other. So that's not what this protocol is solving. That's pro this protocol is just solving the issue of creating a secret that are, is shared between two parts. Uh, so I hope that this visualization um, was a good way to show how uh, Diffie-Hellman works and what goes into this equation. Um, I have built this as a little example with just JavaScript and HTML. Uh, I used a little library called BigJS that uh, re is required to calculate with really large numbers. Uh, I had a lot of errors in the beginning because JavaScript doesn't allow that large integers um, when you're calculating. So that could be good to know that um, there are libraries if you want to do large calculations. And this example you can find on my GitHub page if you want to try it out yourself and fiddle with it and look more into the code and uh, understand this fully. And uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you found this interesting. Share this with you, video with your colleagues and your friends. And uh, give it a like if you like it. And uh, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And I really hope to see you in the next video.